My name is Will Wiseman. It's my great pleasure to be able to welcome you here to our third annual, and I'm very happy to say, sold out Exponential Finance Conference. For you non-locals, it's also my great pleasure to be able to welcome you to New York City. Uh, this is really an extraordinary, extraordinary city. It's obviously played an incredibly important role in the history of our country, uh, in the history of financial services, increasingly uh, in the history of fintech. And it's been really exciting uh, as a tech-focused organization for us to see exactly the type of, uh, of uh, entrepreneurial activity activity that's taking place here. For those of you who are new to SU, I want to take just a few minutes to tell you a little bit about who we are, what we stand for, our founding history, and intellectually some of the things that, uh, that uh, make up the foundation of our curriculum here. So at SU, our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower leaders to apply exponentially accelerating technologies to address the world's largest problems. You can think of us as part think tank, part educator, and part new company accelerator. It's a very rich ecosystem, lots going on. Uh, these conferences are, are a real important part of uh, what we do and, and how we educate folks. We focus on eight primary accelerating technologies. These are all areas that have crossed over to be information technologies and are growing exponentially. These are areas that we think are gonna be the biggest drivers of disruption going forward uh, and where we've chosen to focus our efforts. And it's not just the technologies, really, uh, individually. It's all about convergence. So we spend a lot of time, you'll hear this word come up multiple times, over, this, uh, over the next two days. It's how do these disparate technologies come together and, and cause the creation of new products, new services. Previously in uh, industries, there might be a dominant technology that you focused on. And what we're seeing more and more now is that it's really about this convergence of technologies. So at SU, we're also very much about impact. So we're a benefit corporation. We have uh, chosen to focus on these 11 areas, what we call global grand challenges. Uh, these are areas where we see some of the largest problems in the world and where we think technology can really have the biggest impact. So you'll hear us talk a lot about these global grand challenges. We're going to talk about them uh, in particular on uh, tomorrow, go into a little more detail about them. So I want to tell you a little bit about our founding story. Uh, we were founded in 2008, uh, Ray Kurzweil on the right and Peter Diamandis on the left. These two gentlemen came together at a TED conference. Uh, Ray was speaking, Peter had just read Ray's book, The Singularity is Near. Uh, in it, Ray really highlighted all the extraordinary change that was taking place. He identified his laws of accelerating returns. He started talking about exponential technology and these changes that were happening and that we were about to enter this period of really rapid and transformative of growth. Um, so that spoke very, very deeply to Peter, and they basically came together to talk about how they needed to create an organization where, um, where people could come, individuals, uh, companies, and governments could come to learn about these, uh, these technology uh, areas. So Peter Diamandis is the first half of our founding equation. One of the most energetic guys I know, he's got his hands in just tons of different companies. Some of the biggest and boldest thinking that's out there. He is, besides being chairman of SU, he is uh, an executive chairman of the X Prize, of Planetary Resources, of Human Longevity, um, and, uh, and Bold Capital Partners. You'll hear us also talk a lot about abundance. Um, Peter, as an author, wrote a book called Bold and a book called Abundance. It's really this abundant mindset, this way of looking at the world and thinking about it in terms of going going from a scarcity mindset to a really abundance mindset. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a bit, but it's a very important concept to who we are at SU. So Ray Kurzweil is the other half of the founding equation. He is a brilliant thinker. He is one of the most accurate futurists and predictors uh, that this world has ever known. Um, he's an inventor, he's an entrepreneur, he is a director of engineering over at, uh, at Google. Um, we're gonna hear from him later on today when he speaks with Bob Pisani. So there's some extraordinary things happening in the world. I'm sure everyone's getting a, getting a sense of this. I wanted to just kind of pull a couple headlines that have resonated with me and that we've seen recently. Um, clean energy jobs for the first time surpassing oil jobs. Uh, the UK is thinking about a universal basic income. In May of this year, Portugal ran their entire country off of renewable energy for four years. You know, I don't know about you, but for me, that, that's pretty extraordinary. I think a couple years ago, you couldn't imagine an entire country running for you know, even a single day, never mind four days. And so there's all sorts of really remarkable things that are starting to happen here. Uh, we have this uh, blockchain-based distributed autonomous organization that was just launched, raised $100 million uh, to invest in early stage capital. So start to think about that. I mean, leaderless companies that are out there are being uh, managed by the blockchain, going out, pooling hundreds of millions of dollars to capital to start doing investing. The world is definitely starting to change. 
So to really understand some of these things, though, you need to understand about exponentials, and you need to understand about Ray's laws of accelerating return. So I, I want to take just a few minutes to walk you through that, and again, kind of lay a little bit of the foundation for uh, what SU and our curriculum and our thinking is all about. So first of all, it's, uh, I want to talk about exponentials. So what does that mean when something is exponential? All it basically means is that something is doubling in a finite period of time. Um, we've heard of Moore's Law as being one of the paradigms. Uh, that's just one example. But it's really anything that, that is doubling in a, a set period of time. It's a difficult concept for us to grasp, though. Uh, if you think about when our brains went through their major evolutionary period, it was hundreds, uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's a very, very different world. The world was very much linear, and it was very much local. The world was changing very slowly. We focused on just the things that were immediately around us. Fast forward to today, this is very much a global and exponential world. So something happens on one side of the globe, you know, we hear about it in minutes or seconds, right? And computers hear about it in milliseconds. So it's a very, very different world. It's a very different world for us to intuitively grasp. Our brains just don't naturally work that way. Uh, and so one of the key things from this conference is hopefully to help you think about and understand exponential thinking so that you can start to look at problems and start to think about what the world might look like in the future using this exponential uh, uh, thinking. So I want you to imagine a room um, that is filling up with water. It can hold up to a billion gallons. It starts off at minute one with one gallon. Every minute, it's doubling. You'll see in these early, early stages, basically, it's almost like nothing is happening in this room. Obviously, a very large room. Um, but as you start to get further down the curve here, all of a sudden, you start to see something interesting happen. So you know, at 23, there's seven, 23 minutes, there was uh, three minutes or 3% 3 of water in this room. And then all of a sudden, it's these last few minutes where everything starts to change. The whole world, all of a sudden, it's that last step basically goes from 50% to 100% of the room. And it's pretty extraordinary when you think about technologies that are growing this way. This is why we find ourselves in situations where all of a sudden we're surprised that this technology has come on, come on the market uh, for a long time, didn't seem like anything was happening, and then boom, major, major things are starting to happen. It's because of this exponential growth. It's because of these technologies that are kind of in the later stage of these curves. And we have a lot of different technologies right now that are going through this type of growth. So I mentioned Ray's Laws of Accelerating Returns. This is uh, a chart that came out in his book, The Singularity is Near. Um, what he identified was that Moore's Law was basically just one of five paradigms. And if you looked back all the way uh, as early as 1890, that we've seen examples of exponential technology. So starting with the first electromechanical calculators that were used in the 1890 and 1900 census. Uh, and going forward, there's been basically this very smooth and predictable exponential uh, trans progression. We all know each of these technologies have a finite lifespan. Um, so what, what basically happens is in the earliest days, things start off very slow. They reach this period around step four or five, where all of a sudden there's this really radical uh, change and this rapid acceleration that takes place. And then you start to reach some sort of finite maxim, uh, and that technology starts to peter. But what's interesting is that another technology then appears. And so it's a ser series of these nested S-curves. Uh, you can imagine it's one technology basically sitting on the shoulders of another technology. And together, those create that very smooth curve. Uh, and so one of the most important kind of takeaways is for you to, to, to leave here kind of knowing that while we might not know what this next paradigm of technology is going to be, you can bet that there's one coming. There always has been. There will hopefully al always will be. Uh, and so you start to be, be able to think about what the future might look like. You know, if I'm Ray Kurzweil and I'm thinking about, OK, if I know that the price performance of computing is going to continue to grow uh, at this given this exponential rate, I know that in 2030, I'm going to have a $1,000 computer that's going to be as powerful as the human brain. And by 2050, I'm may have a $1,000 computer that's going to be as powerful as all human brains for $1,000. It's pretty mind-blowing. And you think about what that means in terms of what the world could look like, the type of problems that we could address, the type of things that we can create. Uh, it's really extraordinary. And so that's what we spend a lot of our time focused on, trying to help people understand that, that way of thinking. So I want to take you through just a, a couple other examples to kind of show you how uh, exponential growth uh, has uh, affects us and, and examples of it from uh, the real world. So starting in 1956, five megabytes of storage cost you $120,000. Fast forward to 2005, 128 megabytes of storage cost you $99. 
And fast forward to today, 128 gigabytes now costs you 33 bucks on, on Amazon. Uh, so that's a 3,000x performance uh, improvement in storage capabilities in 11 years and over 90 million um, since 1956. So really extraordinary, very predictable, very exponential. Same thing with integrated circuits. So 2000, uh, 1971, 2300 transistor count. Looking at 2012, NVIDIA's GPU chip had 7.1 billion uh, transistors in it. Uh, it's about a hundred billion fold increase, and the top transistors now are packing, or excuse me, the top uh, integrated circuits now are now packing in 20 billion uh, plus integrated uh, transistors into them. So it's continuing to grow exponentially. Same thing on the digital camera side. So this is uh, Steven Cezanne. He's the former, the founder, uh, excuse me, the uh, inventor of the digital camera. So 0 0.01 megapixels way back when in 1971. Um, 3.75 pounds, cost $10,000. You fast forward to 2014, uh, 100 megapixels, 0 0.03, and $10. And, and you know, that's a billion times improvement. And it's, again, continuing to grow at this exponential path. So we're seeing technology after technology that is now on this uh, exponential growth path. Once something becomes an information technology, it starts growing this way. These type of challenges, obviously, if you're a mature business, uh, these are challenging times. There's all sorts of incredible opportunity, but uh, if you were lucky enough to be a successful company and make it to the S&P 500 back in the early 1920s, you, know, you had a 67-year run. Pretty, pretty nice period of time for you to, uh, to, to enjoy and, and really be kind of at the top of the heap. Uh, today, that's down to 15 years, and that's shrinking dramatically. And if you're lucky enough to make it to the Inc. 500 list, that's a very short lifespan. Uh, ten, it's predicted that 40% of those companies might not even exist after 10 years. So that we're entering this really rapid period of creation and destruction. And if you're a big, large company, you have to be actively out there working to kind of recreate your business. How do you turn your business into an information technology company? So one of my hopes from this conference is that you're going to come out of here with uh, not being pessimistic, not being feeling kind of beaten down, but feeling like, hey, this is really an exciting time and what could be disruptive stress is really incredible opportunity. So part of that is embracing this abundant mindset. I mentioned this is one of Peter's book. Um, and uh, abundance is really, in terms of technology, is the force that takes something that's scarce and makes it abundant. It's an incredibly important way to kind of look at the world because it means everything is changing. And we have a framework that we use that kind of helps take you through this path uh, that I'd like to take you through quickly. So first of all, what happens is something becomes digitized. It becomes an information technology. In that early stage, it starts growing very, very slowly. It's now an exponential growth curve. It's very deceptive. It doesn't seem like much is happening. But then all of a sudden, it starts to hit that knee in the curb and disruptive things start to happen. People are surprised that all of a sudden, these new companies, these new technologies are coming on that, that, uh, that potentially create stress and, and uh, challenge them. We start to see these companies' products and services start to dematerialize and demonetize. Things move to, to becoming almost free and sometimes free. Uh, and then ultimately, we see them get democratized and so kind of pushed out and readily available to everyone. Uh, it's a very predictable path that we see over and over again. It's something that you need to think about as you think about your business. Uh, and we think ultimately it's an incredibly positive step forward and, and um, force uh, in the world for, for positive change. You know, this is contrary to the, the news, uh, to what you see in the news today. I mean, if you uh, do watch TV or, or read the news a lot, it feels like there's a lot of terrible things happening in the world. There certainly are, but it's actually, it's the best time for us ever to be alive as humans. And there's more and more positive things that are happening. It's the safest time. Uh, uh, it's, we're seeing a dramatic reduction in poverty. We're seeing the, a dramatic decrease in the number of wars that are taking place. We're seeing world life expectancy grow dramatically, little blips here and there. Um, but in general, it's uh, clearly moving up and to the right. And with some of the, the technology that's coming along in the medicine and healthcare world, that there's people out there who think, but as early as 2030, that we'll be adding more than a year of life uh, extension to everyone for every year that they live. 
We see automobile and airline fatalities decreasing dramatically. If you think about autonomous vehicles coming online, uh, that's another potential 1.2 million lives that could be saved every year. So lots of positive stuff that's happening as these technologies are, um, are, are being democratized and, and uh, more readily and available. Um, one of the most exciting things, I think, is if you think about that we're going to have 3 billion new people coming online. So almost a doubling of the number of brains that are out there that are harnessing the internet, that are soaking up knowledge, that are contributing to the world's problems, creating companies. Uh, it's really going to be an extraordinary time. Uh, all of a sudden, you'll start to see, you know, lots of, there'll be lots of new customers for new companies. There'll be uh, innovative companies coming up from all over the world. And I think we're going to see a really rapid acceleration and, uh, and a real proliferation of, of interesting uh, new technologies and, and companies as a result. So hopefully I've given you a little bit of a framework for kind of who we are and, and how to think about these next few days, uh, the importance of exponentials, the importance of Ray's law of accelerating returns, having an abundant mindset. Uh, most critically, I think, is really thinking about how does your company become an information technology company so you can get on this exponential growth curve. Um, and our goal is really to help you all become change agents or continue to be change agents within your organization. So to energize you, to kind of empower you with some of this new thinking, uh, to be able to go back to your organization and help you uh, transform it and continue to transform it. So these conferences are pretty amazing opportunities. I, they're uh, great experiences for me. I get to meet some of the extraordinary people in this room. We have almost 400 folks here, actually over 400 folks and about 500 folks total, including our innovation lab folks. Uh, we'll have close to 50 speakers over the next couple of days. Really want to encourage you to, to take the time to get to know some of these people uh, in the room that are sitting beside you. What we find is incredible new business ventures come out of this, friendships, partnerships, investors, uh, and they're right out there. And so we get all sorts of great feedback afterwards that people have made some meaningful connections, but it means you, you know, connecting with people. So really encourage you to get to know some of the folks that are, that are around you. So the Chinese have a proverb that says, may you live in interesting times. And I think there's no doubt that this is a really extraordinary time uh, in human history. And the financial services is certainly going through this period of rapid de dematerialization, uh, demonetization, and democratization. And so one of the things I want you to think about is how, do you, how does your company fit into that? You know, what role are you going to play in that process as, uh, as these dramatic changes start to happen? Mm -hmm.